friends topic for the day is lefort one osteotomy the lefort one osteotomy has become the workhorse of orthognathic surgical procedures it is a technically easy procedure with broad applications to resolve many functional and aesthetic problems it is important to understand the biologic basis of any facial bone osteotomy the revascularization studies of bell and fonseca indicate that the maxilla may be mobilized and repositioned and the survival continues as long as the mo mobilized maxilla remains attached to a broad soft tissue pedicle it means that maxilla can survive as long as the blood supply to it is intact and unhampered what are the indications of lefort one osteotomy uh, basically lefort one osteotomy can be performed to mobilize and reposition maxilla in all three planes namely the vertical anterior posterior and transverse planes coming to the surgical technique with all facial bone procedures positioning of the patient at the time of maxillary osteotomy is very important the patient's head should be elevated approximately 10 degrees and a diluted solution of local anesthesia with epinephrine is injected into the mucosal tissues of the upper lip coming to the incision the oral incision is placed high in the mucobuccal fold of the upper lip it extends from the zygomatico maxillary buttress re region on one side to that of the opposite side crossing the midline incision may be placed using either a scalpel blade or a thermal knife it is placed in such a way that it facilitates subperiosteal dissection to the orbital rim thus exposing the infraorbital nerve okay after after this the dissection of the posterior maxilla is performed a tunneling is performed in order to preserve a broad base intact mucosal pedicle to ensure an intact blood supply to the sectioned maxilla design of the lateral wall uh, lateral maxillary osteotomy is tailored to the patient's aesthetic needs not on every patient same sort of osteotomy design is performed for example the first diagram shows a low uh, level osteotomy the second and the third diagram shows an osteotomy with modification in the infraorbital region and the fourth diagram depicts a low level horizontal osteotomy with no vertical sections the first osteotomy that we perform is that of the lateral wall of maxilla this initiates at the zygomatico maxillary buttress region on one side this is performed using a reciprocating saw and proceeds towards the anterior region towards the nose Uh, so normally here a retractor is placed that is at the junction of the maxilla with the pterygoid plate this is to provide adequate exposure and ensure safety of maxillary artery and its branches so how does maxillary artery appear here as they descend the pterygopalatine fossa the artery will be encountered posterior to the tuberosity region hence keeping a retractor posterior to the tuberosity minimizes the risk of damaging the artery and its vessels following osteotomy of lateral wall of maxilla osteotomy of posterior wall is performed by moving the reciprocating saw in an inferior direction from the zygomatico maxillary zygomatico maxillary buttress region so from the buttress the saw is directed inferiorly towards the pterygoid plate you continue to protect the vessels behind the tuberosity using a retractor once the sectioning of posterior wall is completed the next step is to section the lateral nasal wall 
during this procedure you need to free the cartilage and the bone of nasal septum and vomer from maxilla how is it performed an osteotome is placed at the piriform rim and directed posteriorly and inferiorly it is directed posteriorly and downward inferiorly along the lateral nasal wall towards the perpendicular plate of palatine bone so basically you are separating the nasal septum from maxilla okay hence complete sectioning of palatine bone should be ensured no palatine bone should be remain attached to the maxilla this can lead to fracture that extends up till the orbit hmm? hence ensure a complete sectioning of the palatine bone this is performed using a uh, nasal septum osteotome this is a nasal septum osteotome and and uh, special care should be taken to preserve the nasal mucosa as well the mucosa should not be damaged while during the procedure the next step and the final step in the lifford osteotomy is the separation of maxilla from the pterygoid plates here this is done with a curved osteotome and it is directed medially and anteriorly at the junction of maxilla with the pterygoid plate so at the pterygo maxillary junction you place a curved osteotome in a medial and anterior direction hence this junction is performed again you should take care that the palatal mucosa is not torn or damaged during the procedure so for this you can keep a finger posterior to the tuberosity region at the hamulus okay and making and ensuring that the instrument is right at the pterygo maxillary junction once pterygo maxillary disjunction is performed the next step is to down fracture the maxilla with hand pressure you hold maxilla in the anterior region and perform a down fracture following this a ronger is used a bone ronger is used to remove any remaining vomer or nasal crest of maxilla this is done in particular uh, if repositioning of maxilla is planted in superior direction okay in superior repositioning there are chances that any bony hindrances or bony irregularities will affect the repositioning hence use a ronger to trim off any bony protuberances or irregularities next after down fracturing is complete maxilla is placed in intermaxillary fixation this is intermaxillary fixation where maxilla and mandible is fixed together this is performed after rotating the maxillo mandibular complex into the desired position okay once this is rotated in the desired position and the condyles are placed properly you perform a maxillo mandibular fixation this is followed by stabilization of the repositioned maxilla using bone plates usually 1.5 mm bone plates are used to stabilize the maxilla uh, these are placed mainly at the piriform rim and zygomaxillary zygomatico maxillary crestal regions thus four plates are used to stabilize maxilla following this the incision is closed in layers okay now what are the complications of lefort one osteotomy there might be wound infection bone sequestration formation any sort of neurologic deficit there could be widening of alar base and emphysema these are very rare complications that happen but the most common and significant complication related to lefort one osteotomy is hemorrhage 
the vessel at maximum risk for hemorrhage is a dissenting palatine artery usually bleeding from the source can be visualized and can be controlled with local measures this is about lefort 1 osteotomy thank you